Okay, in this uh, video I'm going to put the, make up the one by ones and the framing. Uh, we're going to make up the transom, the dwarfs. Uh, I'm going to make a mahogany inner stem. Basically, I'm going to get everything ready for putting the boat together in, in the next uh, video, which will, the next video after this, which should be number five. But for now, uh, I'm going to sh uh, just get everything prepared, all the framing and everything. Uh, so, here we go. Right, so we have all our pieces all cut here. Uh, all the plywood is cut. Next thing is to make a one by one. Now you can buy one by one or you can uh, cut it up one by one if you can't. Now I could, I could get some lovely one by one but the problem was only an eight foot length and it was lovely pine. And you really need the gunwales, that's the rails that's on the top of the boat, the inner gunwale. You need it in one, pit, in one piece to keep the shape, right? So keep the shape of the boat. So you could join it, you would make a splice and join it. But normally you would try and keep it in one foot and that needs to be 10 foot long. So I got a 10 foot long, it's a little bit of a curve in it, but there's no knots in it and it's treated. I'm not sure if that's such a good idea, treating it. Uh, so I'm going to cut mine up from this. Now, uh, you, I have a workshop here and I have saw and all that. Uh, if you can source getting one by one or two by one and cutting it in half, then it's fine. Now, when we say one by one, we're talking about uh, finish size, which is uh, approximately 20 millimeters. Okay, we've done all our uh, one by one pieces. You can see them here. Uh, they are, uh, they came out very nice. Uh, looking there. So we'll, we're going to, I got six pieces from that piece of wood and there's some left over. Uh, I cut the, down the center with the bandsaw so I only lost a, a tiny bit and then I managed to get it. So we'll just put them down on the ground here and I'll explain to you what we're going to do next. We are going to put these, gunwales on the sides the gunwale in in inside gunwales they are going the length of this but first we're going to we're going to do first is we are going to i'm going to put the the nose on the bottom of it this piece here and uh, i'm going to fix that onto the bottom of the boat with a butt strap and we will make the butt strap from our scrap wood that we have left over. And it's meant to be only two inch. I'm gonna put it in with, with a tight bond two. In the instructions they say to, to, to the butt strap, that's the butt strap, look, there's the butt strap. And after drilling it. Now, they say to screw it, it's probably right. It leaves it a little bit easier. I have plenty of clamps, but it's a little bit awkward getting the clamp in and this might bend like this. But I'll just give you a hint. Whatever screw you're using, if it's going to come back out through the other side, that's okay if it's continuous thread. I'm using just a, a screw that's uh, maybe about uh, nine millimeters, something. No, it's more. It's probably 10 millimeters. Uh, they're coming out later on. But drill the holes, drill the holes bigger than this so that this pushes through. The reason you do that is this will pull this strap in on, on, into the wood where we're going to put it. 
So you can put a dry hole in first. Sorry, a dry, yeah, you can screw one in and then take it off again if you like first. I have marked my 20 mm here. I'm going to line this one up. And I've also put the center line on this. That's, it only takes a couple of seconds to do that. Um, I'm going to put the glue uh, on the end here as well. Camera 2 recording. Um, yeah, I, 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 I have put the boot strap now on one of the sides. I've also cut the, I've also cut the, the, the top part here. Now I've cut this because there's an inner stem. So I cut the angle here and I came back 20 millimeters. They say one inch, but when he's referring to one inch, he's referring to 20 mm, he's referring to the wood. And down here, instead of 20 mm down here, I'm doing 25 because the plywood as well on, on the transom. And also we're going to put in, we're going to put in two markings here. We're going to put in the one, t uh, the, the, the 650. That's, that's when we get it clamped, we can let it out over the side a little bit. But I'm going to put a glue on it first. So, so we're going to lift this up over, myself and Rex. We're going to keep it. We're not going to make sure we don't damage where we have. I have to scrape off where the glue was there earlier. No, no, don't put it on it yet, Rex. So I will make a little small hole. Don't get carried away if you're using one eight inch bit. Ten millimeter in. Grab it nice and slowly. The drill. See, if you don't countersink it, it breaks the grain kind of, you know, so by using this bit, the screw will, should sit in neater. That one in too much. They're taking off the clamps. And we're cleaning off the glue. So we're going to turn our back over on our other side now. Turn it back over. And we're going to cut our pieces. Now clean the glue off there, will you? And then I'm going to cut my short pieces here. This one I've marked where it's going to, on the bottom. And we'll, we'll, we'll put it on with a clamp, and then turn it over and put the screw. But I will, draw, I, I will drill the holes from this side. So I'm going to cut these two pieces, the, the ones that are going to hold the, bunk, uh, the, the front bunkhead and the aft of the middle bunkhead and no, that one is for down there and this is the short one and it's at angle so I need to square it off here it's at angle on one way I marked which is bottom on it this time so I won't make a mistake these Japanese squares are good using them for years now as a <laughs> Japanese saws as well, I have a pile of them there. This is a Ryuba uh, compact. It's my go-to saw for small work. I have full-size one there as well. You can buy them as a set sometimes, the compact. So this one is going here. And we mark bottom. Bottom is there. So we'll, we'll put a clamp on both sides of this. We'll put one over there and we'll put on this one we'll probably have to put two on it as well, maybe. Uh, we will just let it out over it there. <laughs> Clean the sawdust off. 
I put both them on them. Two of them clamps there that we had earlier. Now, there's a bit of glue left in that, but I'm going to get that washed out, the whole thing washed out with warm water. So, I'm going to put this into place. I'll put a bit of glue on the end as well. Why not? So I'll put a clamp over that side. Make sure it's not covering her the hole. So just barely there, just there. Now see where my screw hole is. You see your line? Yeah. Now that's fine. When I'm screwing, Rex, when I'm screwing. Don't know what's going wrong with that one. Down the bottom. check it. I'm going to double check this in case they moved. We got the clamp. No, it's on the line on both of them. And there, uh, the glue is squeezed out most. Yeah, the glue is squeezed out. I don't think you need the tank to when you're uh, putting it together. In other words, when you're uh, doing your stitching. I don't think you need the tank for it. You need the transom and you need this one and you need this one and you need the stem as well. So we'll be making the stem, not in, uh, I'm going to do the other side here now, I'm going to do the other side of the boat, so I'm not going to record it all over again because recording slows things down as well, and uh, I will do the other side and then our next job after that, well we, we just let these dry and then we will be doing the, we will be doing the, the, the uh, one by ones on the transom and uh, top of, the, of, on some of these on the, the dwarfs as well, and the front dwarf as well, the 650, which is the mast dwarf. Okay, we've let the glue set here, so uh, I'm going to remove uh, the screws. I should have came over further with this. I don't know why I done that. Maybe the way I looked at it. This should have been only five millimeters from there, but it should be fine. We will put lots of epoxy in it. And I just take out the screws. going to be filling these holes with epoxy uh, and they're sunk down about uh, one and a half millimeters two millimeters I will be able to countersink the pan head so we're going to do that and I'll be back to you then in a couple of minutes uh, we're going to start doing the the bunk heads so I'm only putting in one piece but because there's a dagger board going in we're making a modification to it and I'll show you that in two minutes so uh, I'm cutting up all the, the, the supports for, this is the transom, uh, you cut the, I cut them with hand saw, it's much easier, these little saws, the, it's soft wood and it's much quicker than using anything else, so I put these all in place, uh, probably do what I'm doing all my woodworking like joinery maybe, some people say you don't need to have it that good, but no, that's like that. Now when I ha I'm going to glue that, uh, clamp it and screw it from the far side. The, the screws uh, the screws from the far side uh, will be countersunk like, like the other one and they'll be filled with epoxy later on, they're stainless steel screws. There's also going to be one piece going here and one piece going here and it says uh, you put on a doubler so you'll put another piece on top where it joins on to this one to give it more strength. So uh, I'm just going to glue this up and uh, um, screw it up the same I showed you before and okay now we have uh, this piece done uh, we uh, for, for, for a transom uh, they're talking about putting a doubler in here in there between there and there you can put it in afterwards if I want to uh, there's not much detail on why it's maybe to give it more strength uh, that's all glued up and screwed with stainless steel screws all countersunk um, see it along there 
Uh, I used the dome ones and got them countersunk a little bit as well, but I found some more uh, flat, uh, what we call countersink screw instead of the dome. Now, next part, uh, dwarf front uh, bunker. Now, we are doing a dagger board in ours, so we cannot run the, the, the wood down along here like it shows in, can I show you here? It's showing the, the one by one going down along there. That's not going to work uh, when we're doing our dagger board. This is our dagger board drawing here. And our dagger board is uh, between the two dwarfs of the bunkhead is 228. Well, mine is going to be 230. Reason being, I'm using five millimeter uh, plywood. And there's strengthening and everything going on. But this piece, does not go the, the, the whole way across, right? Okay, now we have these all pieces put on, the, the one by one on all these. Uh, this one I might be able to explain better to you because I can go in here close on this camera. And uh, this is the line. The, the dagger board is 18 mm. Inside the dagger board is 20 mm. So we have got 10 and 10, we have 20. Then as our plywood is five millimeters and then our piece of one by one is here. So that's why we will, we will have our uh, dagger board. This part of, this is in the bowl. This is the inside the, the bunkhead. This part, this 20 millimeter here will actually be touching the dagger board right that's the way it is in the drawing even though they didn't cut these out but that's the way it is this is part of the this is going to have to get a couple of coats of uh, epoxy on the back here there will be three by one or they said two six mm no I will I have some 18 mm uh, marine there I will put 18 mm I think is better than solid wood and that will be that will be that will be epoxied in because the, the dagger board is going to be down here and if it hits something this has to be fierce, fierce strong and at the back here down on the bottom it will be all uh, glassed it's all going to be glassed onto the bottom of the boat so this is an important part and this one will be screwed down here of course and glued down here as well uh, it will be screwed up from the bottom I should say so now we have that done and we've also done the I've also put the two pieces on, on here and uh, this is, uh, our, this is called the 650 uh, because it's 650 from the front of the boat. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the mast and when this, this is going to be, the mast is going to be he here. So there's going to be all strength there, but this one is going to be covered over. There'll be a deck on, there'll be a deck on it. So, but we do because we already put the piece in here. Do you remember we put the piece in here on the sides? They come up here, but you remember we have uh, we have uh, uh, what do they call them? Gunwale. The gunwale is going to go through here, so we have to cut these little notches out, and that's all. And that's where our gunwale will go, and we do the same on the other one. So there we go now and thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, uh, in the next video, as you know, we are going to uh, put the boat together. We're going to tie it all up. It's going to look like a boat. So basically it's going into a three dimensional uh, shape and uh, uh, hopefully you will tune in and if you subscribe you and you press the bell for all notifications, you'll be able to see it will pop up on your notifications and if not just come back and you will see them uh, so uh, this that's uh, part five uh, hopefully within a week or less than a week i will have done